Welcome, welcome. Um, every year the Cowboys or the Cowboy fans get excited that uh, we acquire a new offensive lineman in post-draft free agency. You know, last year uh, it was Larry Allen Jr. or whatnot. year before it was a couple other guys. But uh, this year I've been hit up about um, our newest left tackle from Mexico, um, Isaac Aracón. So if I have any native Spanish speakers, let me know in the chat box comment section if I said that correctly. Isaac Aracón. Um, so I had to reach out to some people, I had to make some phone calls and you can't find no film on this fella nowhere. But the good thing about the internet is that you can indeed, if you look hard enough, you can indeed find what you're looking for. And, um, this is the, and I'm saying this with question marks because this whole broadcast is in Spanish, all of it, the fans, the, the commentators, the referees saying penalties in Spanish. So pardon me, but I think this is the Aztec bowl, which is like a college, uh, like a Mexican college all-star game, I would say. Um, the, the two factions kind of get together and fight it out in an all-star type game. And I found out that um, Isaac, is, uh, he was the uh, left tackle of this game, the starting left tackle of this game. So this is going to be the film that we pull from. I pulled a handful of clips that I think summarizes the player in a pretty good fashion. So let's kind of talk about him. Um, first of all, he's big as hell, heavy as hell. All right. He's... um. I think like 6'4", 6'5", 320 some odd pounds or whatnot. So you have really good size on him. That's that's really good. Um, then if we look at him, he's going to be the left tackle for the duration of this film. So uh, we ain't got to point him out too, too much. Um, I think he has pretty solid feet to be his size, right? Now, of course, we're going to go over pros and cons in this. This ain't a highlight tape. I'm not here for your short attention span. Uh, I got some explaining to do. So... As a ball of clay, as a, um, you know, as a very raw player, he got a lot of work to do in terms of technique, in terms of being ready for the NFL, because the the talent gap that he's playing up against now is totally different than the guys that he's going to run into when he gets to training camp. And that's just training camp. You know what I mean? So let's keep an open mind there. But um. What I do notice off the rip is that he has naturally light feet. That's good. He does have natural power, which is also good. And he has great size um, and a great attitude for the game in terms of, you know, angry and pissed offness. So that all works to our benefit. Um, the the biggest cons that we can think about here is the level of competition that he's played against. He's not, you know, it's not like, you know, OK, we got um, we got this guy from Clemson. So he played against all the ACC talent or SEC talent or whatever. You know, this is a guy that's kind of beat up on most of the people that he's played against. And I would even say he was really he was really successful in his all star game. The guy that he, that he played up against, um, he was kind of smoking his boots as well for the most part. Right. Um, but if you watch the film a little closely, you'll see some flaws in his technique. He was able to overcome some of those flaws with his natural abilities. And I would even say the competition that he's playing against. And I want to be kind of safe when I say that because I don't know how good this dude is that he's, that he's lining up against. But I would say that the, his level of competition and his natural abilities kind of hide his flaws. For example, he kind of lunged um, and missed and stumbled, but he still kind of blocked this dude, right? You know, in the National Football League, you don't want to get what we call your shoulders over your toes, because if you do, you would lose balance. You know what I mean? See, see how his shoulders are, are just over his toes right there. We're not powerful like that. So if he's leaning and he's up against a really good defensive end, if he does this against D-Law, D-Law is just going to grab his jersey, pull it, and he'll fall down. He'll fall down to the ground. But he has just enough natural athleticism, enough natural balance to kind of stay on his feet here. Um, but but, you know. Hey, can we fix that? Can we work on that? Absolutely. Sure. You know, just put him with the put him with, you know, some good offensive line coaches. You surround him with some Pro Bowl offensive linemen in Dallas. Then you got action. You got you know, you got good vibes for him. Um, but he got a long ways to go here. So take a look at this. Right. Take a look at this kick set in particular right here. We haven't kick set it like this and or kicks. Yeah. Kick set. Sure. Sliding setting whatever we haven't done this in the national football league in a long time like this how they used to kick set in the 90s um it looks effective here but i would say that it's effective here because his opponent is allowing it to be effective um why don't we use this technique anymore because we never want to drop our post foot and we never want to let our feet get that close we don't want to narrow our 
are based like that. Back in the day, this used to be a way to get out of your stance quickly, but um, over time, like defensive ends and D tackles got quicker. So let's say we kick, 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 kick. If your base is really narrow up to this point, right? See how close his feet is? See how narrow his 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 base is? In 2020 football, D linemen get on you a lot quicker. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, you wouldn't have to worry about a D lineman engaging with you right here. But if this was a really good D lineman, like if he was really quick off the ball, quick first step off the football, especially a defensive end, if he get a hand on you at this point while your feet are this close, you're going to hit the ground because we're not powerful with our feet like this. We're powerful when our feet are kind of like this you see this base this base is a little better that's a bit too wide but right there this base is a little better for us right we can move around we could be just as fast and we're powerful here you can hit me you can hit Isaac or me or whoever whoever the hell playing left tackle here you can hit us at any point right here because we're more powerful right here our base is keeping us balanced is keeping us strong but in the 90s they used to kind of gallop back like this <laughs> and his shoulders are over his toes again, right? So if he goes up against a gangster, that can't be bad for him. Um, but luckily, he didn't. He didn't go up against a gangster. So um, at some point, they're going to have to teach him how to um, do a do a proper kick set or else one of these guys is going to get hands on him. It's going to get a little weird. You know what I mean? But um, in terms of just his natural ability, sure, he's good to go. He's fine. He can he can line up against his relative competition and and be cool. Um, later on in the video, we'll talk about some of the guys that he's going to have to go against and compete against. But, uh, like I said, we'll cross that road a little bit later. Let me run this play and then we'll come back and talk about it. Cause some people be hating that I don't run a play. We're not going to show the receivers catching passes here. We're not here for them. We're here for our guy. Um, so this is where his technique kind of got him in trouble a little bit, right? Uh, we can name a handful of things in offensive line world that he did wrong here, right? Uh, first of all, we, we talked about his kick set earlier. We kind of hated that. I think he dropped his post foot, which is his right foot. If you're, the, if you're on the left side, your right foot is your post foot. You, 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 you don't really want to drop that up foot because it's your power foot. So he dropped his power foot or his power leg or whatever and he just kind of stopped his feet right here he stopped his feet he dropped his post foot he lunged and if you're gonna lunge and drop your post foot and stop your feet then things like this are gonna happen you know um the guy you know the guys that's on the other side that's moving forward constantly <laughs> he gonna get you you know what i mean now quick sets do exist where we can get on a guy quickly and engage and get hands on him like it looks like he tried to do here but you at least still got to move your feet to find yourself in good position before you drop your butt he didn't do any of those things so Isaac is very very raw man very very raw player um can he be fixed? Can he be tweaked, man? Absolutely. He can he can do it, man. He can do it. Because I think even though his tech ugh it's bad. Even though his technique isn't um is 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 not the best, he does have some kind of natural ability to to, to kind of fix that. So um you know what I mean? Like 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 with his size or whatnot, I think he'll be able to do it. That's bad feet, by the way. <laughs> this is what I mean by dropping your post foot, right? At that moment when your right foot drops right there, when you when you when you do that, we don't ever want to cross our feet. We don't want to backpedal. We don't want to drop our post foot like so. Um so that's fine. That's fine. Um, the one thing I would say that gives me a little more optimism about him is the fact that he is so raw and that he's able to win naturally on his own, right? Um and I think he's winning most of these matchups anyway. Like if 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 he loses a match, it'll be his own fault. But I think um him winning these 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 uh winning these these matchups and him not just fitting in. He's actually beating these people a bunch. I think he only lost like two like two reps in this whole All Star game. So if you can show out amongst your peers in that way, that's good. Larry Allen Jr. just kind of fit in in his um ivy league competition like if you're gonna be in that level i want you to dominate the ivy league kids the mortgage loan processors you know what i mean um and for the most part is has been winning these battles against those guys take a look at this play which i thought this was a really really good display of his athleticism right we're gonna get uh let me run the play first we're gonna get some outside zone going to the right here some outside zone going we're going to get the ball going to the outside if you take a look at your left tackle here it's his job to um to drop step and cover up this man he's looking like a two he might be in b gap or something i don't know but to see him reach and be able to reach this guy right that's a damn good 
initial reach block and that shows that 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 shows a good sign about his feet and his movement and you know where he is with his athleticism or whatever he can move around a little bit i think this is a good get um i need him to finish the block though i need him to finish the block i need him to um i need him to stay engaged because the guy that if he you know if he would have finished he he ended up making the tackle he ended up getting in on the um on the uh tackle there so i need my left tackle is zach aracon i need him to finish that guy so he doesn't end up being a part of the play later on down the line but um boy those feet um but yes, for the most part, man, he's he's beating up on the guys that he's lining up against. And that that gives me some optimism, man. You know, that 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 gives me a little bit of optimism that, you know, he'll be fine in terms of when everything bumps up one tick, you know, will he kind of be lost in the sauce? And you know, I don't I don't I don't think he will. If anything, um he got the size to kind of get him over the hump. Um you know, practice squad kind of guy maybe is he a guy that's going to be fighting to make the team sure let's be incredibly fair here because that's what we do on this show it ain't looking great for him because we got a lot of guys on this team that can play right now um he's a left tackle so we're talking about him in terms of like cowboy land right so we're only in cowboy land um in terms of him being a left tackle for the dallas cowboys first of all he got a long way to go in terms of just being able to even say i want to compete with the guys that's on this roster right second of all um second of all the guys that he's going to go up against guys like brandon knight guys like mitch hyatt okay when they were in their amateur phases when you know mitch hyatt was coming out of clemson and brandon knight was coming out of indiana they faced great competition they faced great competition you know uh with uh with um you know you know mitch you know mitch hyatt played in championship games we saw like alabama guys or whatever you know and um i think what gives you know mitch the advantage there mitch and brandon actually is that they've had an entire off season so they know what nfl life is like um but brandon knight has started he started a game in the league before um brandon knight played against um played against green bay for so he has a brandon knight has a year under his belt as swing tackle guy you know mitch hyatt you know, he was, I think, you know, I don't think he was on the practice squad, but I think we kind of carried him a little bit because somebody would take him from the, from the, um, the, um, practice squad. But we know Mitch Hyatt has gone through an off season program before we know he's played top tier competition in college. We know Mitch Hyatt has a better feel for the, for the, for the fights that he's about to get into for these training camp fights that he's about to get into. What happens when you put Isaac versus Let's, let's be fair, like Jalen Jokes, right? What happens when you put him up against Jalen Jokes? Day one, practice, competition period. What happens when he lines up against Jalen Jokes? I think that's going to get a little spooky for him. I think that's going to get a little spooky for him. Because um, we can't put him against D-Law. We can't put him up against uh, our team, our team toxic guys, you know? So... It's going to be a rough little go for him, man. It's going to be a rough little fight. Uh, seems like the guys that he went up against, um, I don't think they were in the caliber of of practice squad guys that we have on our team. So he got a tall hill to climb. Um, but does he have the physical abilities? Yes. Does he have the, the size to pull this off? Sure. And if he can just take that coaching, if he can take that coaching and get the techniques and learn and just adapt and stay physical and – and all that kind of stuff, then, you know, then you could possibly have a conversation with me uh, in terms of him making the team, I would say. I think that's his that's his first big hurdle. I don't want to put swing tackle on him. I don't want to put none of that. I want to see if you can make the team, but you got a long way to go before you can make the team. But congratulations to you, Isaac. Um, uh, congratulations to your families and all that. You know what I mean. Shouts out to um to Mexico. I know Mexico got a big uh got a big cowboy fan base and all that. Um, you know that's gonna help the Cowboys and Jerry or whatever, whatever. But um, in terms of you as a football player, good luck to you, buddy. You got a ways to go. Also, um, Borregos, Bor Bor Borregos. I think I'm saying this right. Uh, my Spanish speaking correspondent helping me out. Um, I think this translates into sheep or ram or lamb. You know what I'm saying? So if we could just further make CD lamb comparisons, if you know. <laughs> If that's what Lamb means in Spanish, then he's going to make the team and start a left tackle for us the next 10 years. All right? Because CeeDee Lamb is that great, and that's his influence. Anyway, 
Um, that's all I got for y'all today, man. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski, the Peaski Weeski, man. I wanted to get this information out. Go learn some Spanish. It'll help you when you you know when you do research on guys like this. You never know when you're gonna need it. All right, peace, man. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.